Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest on the thunderstorm risk that we do have over the next few days. The first batch of potentially heavy showers and thunderstorms is going to be moving up from the south and the southwest over the course of this evening. We've got more potential thunderstorm events coming over the next few days as well so have a detailed look at that in this video. It's also going to be very warm, that's what's fueling these storms. So at the moment we have a very nice, stunning day across many areas with temperatures getting into the low 20s and we could even be seeing mid to high 20s for next week. So summery conditions taking over at the moment, something we have been looking at over the last couple of weeks and it's finally is arriving. We also will have a look at the longer range, look at the GFS and the ensembles right towards the end of the video. To remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if we do start on the live radar, you can see nothing too much is happening over the course of the United Kingdom at the moment. Now, I'm recording this just before 4 pm, so thunderstorm activity and shower development will be starting over the next few hours because we do have high pressure building in, but it's the unstable air is not arriving for another few hours. And you can see the instability to our south. You see heavy showers and storms breaking out across parts of northern Spain. You've got some showers and storms breaking up across France. And you can see just off the periphery of the radar, you can see some heavier showers are now starting to push into the far southwest. Big uncertainty with the development of these showers and storms. But the unstable air mass that's going to potentially give these storms is now starting to spread in up from the English Channel. It does look like there will be a lot of showers around. Electric, act electric activity tonight, i.e. lightning activity, is a little bit iffy. It's very uncertain what we're going to be seeing with it. Different models have different intensities, and of course that would have a knock-on effect on how much lightning we do see. But there's more potential over the coming days. So even if the storms tonight don't quite come off, it does look like there will be even more storms around. And it's not like a scenario where we're not going to see anything at all. It's highly likely we see quite a lot of precipitation around torrential rain for quite a few. Just the lightning activity, the intensity of these showers and storms, that is where there's uncertainty. All models really are showing quite complex um, systems and quite a lot of widespread shower activity. So rainfall is not going to be the thing that's got the uncertainty. It's the intensity perhaps of the rainfall and of the storms. Now if we also do have a look at the temperatures at the moment, um, and you can see it is very warm, we're starting to see some of those oranges come into the charts, um, and you can see across many parts of the Midlands, East Anglia into the southeast, even spreading to the northwest and northern England as well, really, really quite nice. Low 20s is being seen for many areas, and widespread high teens, so all areas really. Getting into the mid high teens, these yellowy orangey colours and some dark oranges, as I said, in these central and eastern areas where it's getting really warm. You can see the hottest air though is coming up from Spain and France. You can see a bit of a pocket of cooler air there, but that's under thunderstorms. But real hot air that is spreading up from the south and could give mid 20s for the UK next week. But as I said in the last few videos, it is all dependent on shower and storm activity. If we see showers and storms forming within these warm pockets of air, we will see those temperatures only rise to low 20s. If we do see more sunshine, shower activity reduced or shower activity confined to certain areas, areas see more sunshine could be getting up into the mid to high 20s. So it could be really quite nice next week for some but it could also be very miserable with a lot of rain and thundery activity. So we do start by uh, have a look at the thunderstorms by having a look at the WRF. Now we'll start on the most unstable Cape values, which is the energy within the atmosphere for the most unstable particles. Once you've got some uplift, this is the amount of energy that is available. So it, this would maintain storms that are forming over in the near continent, which is the most likely scenario with this. But being May, not having the hottest air mass possible, um, and it's still being early in the season, we're not going to be seeing loads of homegrown storms. It's possible, but the majority of these intense storms, the majority of the precipitation is going to be uh, storms formed over the near continent that are being imported. So the most unstable Cape value is the most important thing we have to look at as it will maintain storm strength. 
Now, over the course of this evening, you can see a little bit of cape in the far southwest for the early hours of tomorrow. You can see those darker blues there. Um, and that could help the uh, storm activity down there. But as I said, it's not a crazy high signal. So uncertainty with how much lightning activity we do see from this. Beyond that, it does look not too bad tomorrow. A bit of cape across parts of Scotland and northern Wales. So could be some shower and storm activity there. We'll have a look at precipitation in a minute. But if you see across the new continent, you can see big levels of cape coming up through northern France. And that's where we're going to see big thunderstorms start developing through Sunday afternoon into the evening. And they could be shipped into the UK for late Sunday, early hours of Monday. Because you see that cape travels across the channel into the southeast, East Anglia, part Parts of the Midlands as well, and in this area of increased Cape, that's where we could see the biggest storms. Widespread showers though, so even if you're not in this Cape, we could still see torrential rain and showers and still storms could form, um, but this is the most likely area. Beyond that, that cape does decrease, and then through Monday afternoon, we see widespread cape as we are all in a very warm air mass. Because original storms through Sunday night into Monday are from a, the, an original plume, but once we're in a very warm air mass, we're going to see more cape levels. And you can see widespread shower activity on Monday if we do see that lift. Eventually, that does clear, and through Tuesday, we can't really spread too far into the day. But you can see multiple uh, chances for storm activity. Now, if we do have a look at the precipitation from the WRF, now we run through this evening, see a few showers across northern Wales, and then we see big, big shower activity over the course of the southwest. Um, and you can see heavy showers and storms moving in. Again, uncertainty with the exact intensity of these showers and storms moving up through southern parts of Wales, into northern Wales as well, and it's through Sunday afternoon we could see more showers and storms. You can see these pop-up showers and storms there. That's where we have that increased Cape values, and of course in Scotland as well. So you can see the correlation between increased Cape and increased intensity of the precipitation. Now we do run through Sunday afternoon. Those are the areas with the highest chance of showers and storms in the day, but it's this area to our south through Sunday evening, and you see big storms start popping off through central southern England into the Midlands, East Anglia and the southeast. Big showers and storms. Now, it's not going to be a massive blob of precipitation like this. It's going to be scattered. It's going to be breaking apart. But there is likely to be big, intense areas within this where we do see lightning, torrential rain, maybe even hail, and your typical thunderstorm sorts of conditions. Now, beyond that, that does head northwards through early hours of Monday, turning more into a broader area of rain through Monday morning, so giving heavy precipitation through many areas across Scotland. And in the south, you can see by Monday afternoon, with increased Cape values, we could see more pop-off showers and potentially thunderstorms there. So, big risks over the coming days of showers and storms. Very interesting seeing this. We've got multiple chances, two, three chances in the next 72 hours from the WRF run. And as we'll see with some of the other models that go out to 120 hours, like the UK Mass Office run, there's even more chances come the middle to end of next working week. So multiple thunderstorm events could be incoming for many. Now, if we do have a look at the Arpege, again, this will only run out to 72 hours. But again, if we have a look at the most unstable Cape values, see nothing too significant at the moment. And through tonight, a little bit through the far southwest, but nothing crazy. This is why I'm a little bit sceptical with lightning activity and intensity, but still does look like there will be a lot of showers around um, and maybe some torrential showers. And you head through Sunday, you can see some Cape lift across parts of Scotland. Not as much through Northern Wales, though, through the afternoon, so our pair's not seeing that. And that's why there's so much uncertainty with these showers and storms. That Cape isn't there. We won't see the showers or storms really develop too much. If it is there, could pep up these showers significantly. Now, you can see through Sunday evening the increased Cape values across the near continent, spreading through into central southern England, the Midlands as well. Quite high levels. Again, not crazy. You can look at the uh, amount of Cape we do get. Uh, and you can see it's hardly a quarter of the whole, uh, whole sort of legend at the bottom. But, of course, those reds and pinks really exclusively more towards the mid-tropics, sort of American areas where we do see huge supercells, huge meso uh, mesoscale systems. 
but we won't see that in the UK. We rarely ever see anything like that in the UK. So these are relatively uh, moderate to high amounts of CAPE for the UK. So storm activity could be high through Monday morning, even though on the legend it doesn't look like it's crazy. Um, it's just we don't. We're not going to be seeing anything much above sort of yellows or maybe oranges in the UK, just simply because of how northwards we are in um, our latitude. Now beyond that you see that cape does uh, move away and every Monday afternoon you see more scattered areas of increased cape. So this is where we could see widespread showers and storms break out through Monday afternoon and then again does reduce um, through Tuesday. But Tuesday and Wednesday looks like they could be more shower and storm activity. Now, if we do have a look at precipitation, just the raw precipitation charts. Now, you can see through this evening, heavy showers and storms breaking out in the far southwest through southern Wales. Maybe even spreading further eastwards through tomorrow afternoon as well. Not seeing that on the WRF. Interesting. Very brief break. And then see more showers and storms imported through Sunday afternoon. Not quite as intense, perhaps, as the WRF, but still some intense blobs of showers and storms within that, more scattered, and you can see breaking out into a broader area of heavier precipitation and storms through Monday morning and afternoon, and in the Monday afternoon, you can see, again, higher levels of showers and precipitation through central areas within that increased Cape value. So, yeah, does look like could be some intense showers and storms around uh, maybe tonight into tomorrow morning, perhaps even through tomorrow morning uh, into the afternoon for some, and then again uh, tomorrow evening into early hours of Monday. Now, if we do have a look at the UK Met Office run, this is run we normally have a look at uh, on our sort of day-to-day -day videos, um, look, and we'll have a look at the precipitation and temperature from this. Again, precipitation goes out to 120 hours, so you'll see there's more thunderstorm potential later in the week. So you can see this afternoon, nothing too crazy happening as I'm recording this. Showers start popping off in the next hour or two in the southwest, turning quite intense perhaps, and even spreading further eastwards with intense showers and storms through central southern England. Those do slowly spread uh, northwards and eastwards, and then shower activity across northern Wales, parts of Scotland, and those showers do dissipate. And through tomorrow afternoon, not too bad. So not too much shower activity through tomorrow afternoon, perhaps across parts of the north and northwest. But here we have to look to our south through Sunday evening. Heavy showers and storms pushing up from the south, and you can see breaking out in that unstable air mass through early hours of Monday. And you can see this showing widespread storm activity, even further northwards and westwards through parts of Wales, perhaps into Northern Ireland, into parts of Northern England and Southern Scotland, not exclusively in the Midlands and the eastern areas with the increased Cape. And those showers and storms just pop off once again through Monday afternoon. Big storms potentially being seen there. And then again, through Tuesday afternoon, seeing a weather front push through, and uh, we're going to see again sliding up against warmer air. We'll see it. We'll have a look at those 850 HP temperatures in a minute. And it's pushing up against that warm air with an instability. And what do we see? Big showers and storms pop off through Wednesday evening. You can see just on the eastern side of this uh, weather front, uh, you can see huge storms breaking out, spreading up from the south, turning very intense before sweeping out into the near uh, uh, North Sea. Now, if we do have a look at these upper air temperatures, you can see pretty warm at the moment. But it's through this evening we see that increased plume, 10, 12 degrees at 850 HPA, which is causing those increased storm activity for this evening. And then through tomorrow afternoon, potentially very warm in the south. And then through the evening, seeing another increased plume there. You can see small little system there, 8 degrees in the centre of this little low pressure system, 13, 14 degrees at, at 850 HPA around it. And that's going to give enhanced storm activity. Does spread through slightly cooler upper air conditions through Monday afternoon, but we see a Another push of very hot air through Tuesday, giving intense uh, temperatures again. And through Wednesday evening, you can see weather front pushing in from the west. Very hot air just to our east, and that's why we see these big storms that we saw a minute ago. Now, if we do have a look at the two meter temperatures, you're going to see it's going to be very hot over the next few days. Well, very warm, if not hot, depending on what you classify uh, really as hot. Widespread low 20s today. Some areas, I'm sure, getting higher than that 22, 23, 24 degrees. Definitely feeling very warm out there. For tomorrow afternoon, again, very warm, low 20s, widely high teens into 21, 22 degrees for many areas across England and Wales. And we head through to Monday, again, areas of 20 to 23 degrees, depending on where the showers is. You can see further north, it's a bit cooler as we have more of that precipitation and thundery uh, outbreaks still there. And we've head through Tuesday, 
slightly sunnier day, less shower activity, widespread low to mid 20s, 26, 27 degrees in East Midlands into East Anglia and the London area, and could be even higher than that, 28, 29 degrees would be possible. And through Wednesday, you see big temperature contrast, weather front pushing in, so cooler in the west, but very hot still in the east, low to mid 20s, where we see those storms start to break out. Very interesting there. So warmer conditions over the next uh, sort of five days, but also quite a lot of thunderstorm potential. Now, if we do finish the video by just having a look at the GFS and the ensembles, you see high pressure building in at the moment. So you can see southerly winds, low pressure to our west, high pressure to our east, bringing up those warmer plumes from the south, from Spain and North Africa. And eventually that low pressure is putting pressure on the high pressure to budge. And eventually by later this week, by Thursday, Friday, Saturday time, low pressure sweeps through where we can see again a thundery breakdown. Beyond that, generally just stay with a westerly flow before high pressure builds back into the start of next week, turning things warmer again, but a lot to dry with less thunder activity over with the high pressure centred more over the top of the UK. Beyond that, we go to a bit of a northerly wind to end the run. Quite cold and chilly, could be bring those temperatures right back down again, but it's right at the end of the run, so I wouldn't look too much into it at this stage. Now, if we do have a look at the uh, upper temperatures, Warm conditions at the moment, very warm starting to spread in through the evening into tomorrow. And then slightly cooler air mass again through Monday and Tuesday, seeing another plume of very warm air into Wednesday as well. For low pressure does try to push it away by the end of this working week, back down to low single digits for upper air conditions. For high pressure builds back in with another warmer air mass, giving temperatures back into the mid to low, twen uh, mid, uh, low to mid 20s, sorry, could be even higher than that in a few spots before we start to see cooler conditions come in, but right at the end of the run. So again, I wouldn't put too much in that. Now, if we do have a look finally at the ensembles, you can see very warm over the next five, seven, five to seven days. Very hot, a good five to ten degrees above average. Then dropping more towards average or slightly above average, looking very decent, but a lot of scatter. Some going much chillier, including the operational run in the longer term. So northerly winds are possible, but there's not a lot of certainty with it. Other runs having it much warmer as well. Quite a few precipitation spikes over the next five to seven days, and they're all starting to converge together where we see these shower activity uh, and thunderstorm outbreaks. Again, their intensity is going to vary um, depending on exact position. 10 miles can make a massive difference in thundery um, activity and torrential rain. One area could see 50 millimeters of rain, another area could see 10 millimeters of rain, and they could be 10 miles apart. So we could be seeing sort of these sort of conditions over the coming days. Now, if we also have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, you can see, uh, if we do go to the midnight run, very warm over the next seven days, very hot, and quite a lot of precipitation over the next seven days in spells, uh, in those thundery spells we had a look at in the short range models. Then returning more towards average, but staying well above average by a couple degrees right into the longer term. So ECMWF definitely favouring a continual warming trend through May. And if we do finally have a look... Um, at the two meter temperatures just to finish up you can see low to mid 20s over the next five to seven days again depending on shower activity and in the longer term dipping down slightly back towards high teens again these are low resolution models uh, these are low resolution ensembles sorry so they are going to underdo the temperatures by a couple degrees so add a few degrees to this but in the longer term we see temperatures rise once again maybe getting towards the mid to high 20s maybe 30 degrees and of course as we head towards end of may into june july we don't need as hot upper air conditions to be getting mid to high 20s just simply because the sun is getting stronger the ground is warming up the seas around us are warming up so it just means um, sort of 5 to 10 degrees at 850 HPA can give us our mid 20s, whereas at the moment we need 10 to 15 degrees at 850 HPA to give us those mid 20s. So even though the upper air temperatures don't look amazing in the longer term, still above average, it could still give us these very warm, maybe even hot conditions. So it's looking really nice if you love warmer, hotter weather, but it's also looking really good if you enjoy thunderstorms. If you don't like either of them, it's not a great outlook over the next week or two. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you stay safe out there if you are getting it impacted by these storms. And I'll see you again for another video soon.